Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, so let's, let's work away. Uh, I don't know whether there's any feedback. So, folks, I am so happy to have uh, Bob Green on with me, uh, Guru Bob Green. I'm going to sort of give you a wee bit of an intro as to how I know him, uh, because it's actually a very interesting story. So, my, my time... My time in martial arts, I know that Bob um, did some work with CK Sporty Gobert Letty in Italy in the past of the Abudo, and we'll maybe get to talk about that a bit. But uh, I've heard all these great reports about Bob Green, and I decided I was going to bring him over for a course in Northern Ireland to World Jiu Jitsu Ireland. And that was back, I think it was around about uh, 2000. And Bob, Bob isn't, isn't, you know, he's, he's a master of his craft, so. It's not as if he's, he's cheap. Uh, you, you get what you pay for, so I paid quite a bit of money to get him over. And I went to Belfast International Airport to pick him up, and I seen him walking towards me, and he had a really pronounced, bad, a seriously bad limp. And I thought, my God, how's this guy going to teach if he's got such a bad limp? And uh, I got him for the plane. I said, what's wrong? And he said, well, I need a hip replacement. And I said, are you going to be able to take the course? And he said, yeah, I'll be able to take the course, no problem. And, I, I, you know, we had a chat in the car, and when we got to the leisure centre, uh, Bob was wearing a, a T-shirt and, and a pair of tracksuit bottoms, and I'm used to, you're in a jiu-jitsu gi, and you have your, your rank, your belt on, your black belt on. And I said, there's a change room. He says, no, no, I'm okay. I'll just wear my T-shirt and my, my um, tracksuit bottoms. I thought, right, okay. And he went in, and I was still concerned. I was still in the back of my head thinking, is this guy going to be able to do anything? Because, you know, he's got this bad limp. And he just, he walked onto the middle of the mat, and he handed a guy a knife, and he just said, stab me. And the guy sort of fluffed about and poked his hand towards his uh, st- to Bob's stomach. And Bob said, no, stab me. And the guy did it a wee bit faster, and Bob sort of just looked at him, Give him a dirty look and said, would you for fuck's sake stab me? And the guy lunged at him with the knife. And before you could see, or I didn't even know what he did, but he had the knife in his hand. And the guy was standing there bewildered. And I thought, wow, I, I, I've got the right guy. I've got the right guy. <laughs> and so the first thing if we can talk about, Bob, I'd really love to talk about is, obviously you've, you've had two hip replacements. Yeah. And that is actually, I believe, that's made you the martial artist you are, because yes, yes, it's not that you have totally changed everything about your skill set to definitely. do that and, yeah. and adapt and change. And, and a, there's a there's a thing, Sun Tzu. Uh, what we need to do in life is adapt and change. And this is this is is so true of everything we do. Uh, totally have to adapt and change. If you're sick, you have to adapt. If you've hurt your arm, you have to adapt. If you're depressed, you have to adapt. So how did you get through that? You know, first of all, what happened to hips? Second thing is how did you get how did you develop this style and this technique that goes beyond Yeah. Well I was I was um, obviously I started training in about nineteen sixty six, sixty seven. Um, and I did karate. And I was pretty good at that, and um, but I was always interested in. Um, I was fairly influenced by a, a comic book uh, or a comic serial called uh, Monster Blades, okay. which is like um, like Emma Peel, who's just died just now, you know, from the Avengers, Diana Rigg. She was like a female James Bond crime syndicate spy sort of person and i really like the books and they come out in about 63 so and they were into like this idea of completeness you know of combat yeah. and not being rules based not following like dogma yeah and um so that was a big influence on me so even though i did Karate. I was doing groundwork and stuff like that before, but I was always. It's like how my brain is really. I'm sort of interested in everything, you know. As anybody will tell you, I'm just going bing, bing. Oh look, bing. You know, that, my brain's going. I'm interested in poetry, art, music, opera. I just find it all just amazing and, and intriguing. And uh, and so I got into. Uh, I got 
started to doing like triathlon early. I, I, I came to I came to LA in 1980, and there was one book uh, on 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 the bookshelf uh, about triathlon, uh, and I went, "Wow, I'm going to do that." Because they said it was mad, you know. They said, "Oh, it's just only lunatics do it." So I went, "Excellent." That's me. I've chosen myself. You know, I'm going to go to the pool. Uh, so I started on January the first. Uh, uh, got in the pool, almost drowned. And uh, anyway, I, I trained for triathlon, and then I, I got into this um, other thing called the Carrymore Mountain Marathon. I think you've got a uh, you've got a similar type of thing over there. Ancestors in the Morns. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Where you did it last a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you've got a pack, and there's two of you, and you go out for t- t- two days, and you do all the checkpoints and things. And so I said, well, let's t- t- do that as well, because that's mad, yeah? Uh, and so we did that, and um, and I got pretty good. I was doing six-minute miles. I could do 10 miles, 10, 10 hilly miles in an hour. So that's a, that's a good pace. It's like a club level, wasn't it? Uh, and I was out on the bike from the triathlon doing – 200 a week on the bike and then doing my training as well, you know, my kicking and punching in the evening. Uh, what was great about that, I never had any problems with being tired, you know, c- c- cardio was. But obviously, that wear and tear, I had a, I didn't realize I had a, a slip to hit the cyst, meaning how your hip goes in, on this side it slipped, probably when I was a child uh, or when I played rugby at school or something like that yeah and um and so therefore it was wearing badly yeah on, on one one point yeah and um i did a film when i was about 23 um which is on youtube and it's called the big Z- zapper i think it's called or the the sex life of a female private eye. It's a terrible film. It's just terrible. But we did it, and it was great. We had great fun. But if you you, you look at me there, you can see I have a limp. Yeah. So even then, I was 23, I had a limp. Uh, but people used to think it was a bit of a swagger. So I'd, I'd get into lots of trouble. You, know? you think you're, you know. Um, so anyway, I did that, and my hips wore out, and then... I was at a party for a friend and who was quite a well-off friend. He was a stockbroker. And we're at this like, drinking party. And I realised I was doing trials on this end and I was doing the loads of money lifestyle at the other end. We were having the roast beef and the Chateau Brion and, the, and just doing and drinking heavily. You know? and, um, and I was at this party in, in Cornwall, this little beautiful beach hotel uh, and on day two of it I went I just don't feel well I just all the time don't feel well and then from then on it just went and it was like falling off a lot um, and I just within a year I was I was a cripple my guts didn't work uh, my whole bios in my stomach was out uh, I had no energy uh, no one could help at all I mean I had one guy said to me, uh, "Well, he was the he was the principal of the British School of Osteopathy, and he said, well, order your chair.' And I went, "What do you mean, order your chair?" He said, "Well, order your wheelchair." He said, "Because you, you you need a chair." And I I went, "You can you know you can bugger off." So I went home, looked looked what up you, everything. What do you say? Was it twenty three? No, no. Then I'd be about thirty six. 37, yeah. 37, maybe, you know. Um, and then, then my hips just went, you know, I, I, I limped everywhere. And I, I was still tall, but I, I'd gone from being not an elite athlete, but a pretty good athlete to being a cripple almost like, you know, within a year. So I still did my stuff, but I was constantly struggling, constantly pushing it uphill, you yeah? uh, know, and, uh, and smiling, you know, and doing that sort of smile and training. Uh, but it was psychologically hard. So I gave up 
drinking then because uh, I found that drink influenced it a bit. And then I changed my diet and I went and saw lots of doctors. Uh, it's like the alternative doctors uh, and I did my research and they helped a bit but uh, from then on it's been like something I have to manage you know um, and and then what happens is I was teaching but I had to adapt what I did because I couldn't lunge in or, or kick people in the head anymore you know um, and so therefore my style became what have I got what can I do in this box that I'm in? So that's why I talk about now with the 4D stuff uh, about the box because all of us have a box that we stand in, you know, we're, uh, that our feet outline that box, and there's all that there's all that space in there, and you can be inside the box, outside the box, pushing in, or you can be inside the box, pushing out, or you can split the box, or you can fold that box, and and I found that most people didn't use what they had, you know. Uh, so it was like having less, I developed more. And uh, and also because I wasn't as attribute strong anymore, you know, like I didn't have that sort of like I couldn't do, I didn't have the vitality. I'd always do like 40 or 50 uh, Catholics in the class, do squats till people dropped. I was always the last person cranking them out, you know, um, then that sort of came, dropped off, came to an end, so I had to be cleverer, you know, so I just developed, I took all the stuff I learned off of Dan in Santa and I just adapted it and went, well, that doesn't work, that, because that requires you to be, and also what you realise when you've got a bit of a problem, it's great, isn't it, what a great opportunity you've got, I, I said to people, um, you got a problem that that's great because that, that's how you grow as an individual isn't it you know um i said to people look look at that great tree over there do you like that tree or that tree and there's a straight tree that goes just up straight and there's this gnarly tree with all the bits uh -huh. and i go oh they go that's a nice no, a great tree that one and i go well look that's an incident and it's had to adapt there and it's been hit by lightning it's had to adapt there it's a it's had a disease it's adapted so uh in that way, it it was great for me. I'd spent 15 years in pain every day, uh, almost all the time, you know, but not, uh, I, I never took ibuprofen and, and things like that because I found they, they didn't really work on that sort of pain anyway. Or if they did, it was very insubstantial, you know. Um, so I just did lots of, breathing like you do kept on my diet and I do cold bath every morning yeah and after training I come back and have an ice cold bath and that really helped a lot yeah my vitality improved uh, and and since then it's been like a an ebb and flow I, I I'm great and then I have a little blip and then I'm back again you know but so with my with my stomach or with my gut but my hips I had replaced in 2001, uh, and wow, it's just like I grew an grew an inch because obviously the pain just brings you down, doesn't it? But whilst I was had my bad hips, I did some of the best work I ever did. Yeah. You know, because it yeah, just happened. When you went to that course, it was almost like you stood on one leg. Which was your pivot? Yeah, yeah. And you just pivoted around that one leg. Yeah, yeah. But nobody could get you. No, and I'll, I'll no, wasn't it wasn't you you're moving from here to here. No, you're no. You're moving from here, and just a slight, you know, the, the yeah. smallest of movement, were, was giving you the maximum. You didn't yeah. need to overreach in anything. No, and, was, and was I, I, I realized then that where Miyamoto talks about investigate walking. He's so true because that's what I did. I mean, we, we uh, one of my close friends, Tim Harding, who's who's great, he's a lovely guy and a, a great uh, 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 um, uh, a martial artist. You know, um, we do we do stick fighting in the garden. I just walk in and hit him, yeah. and as I walked in very naturally, 
he couldn't see me because it was walking. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like a, a lunge attack. So I'd just like do something and I'd walk in and go, bah! and then as he went and hit me, I'd just walk back out of distance. And then he, he'd come in chasing me and I'd go, bosh, and he'd walk back and I'd walk after him. And, 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 and it was profound. You know, like really, you learnt so much there. I mean, one time I got quite into weaponry because obviously you can't hit hard uh, when you can't move as well, you know. Um, so things I did to adapt, I, I got into sticks and knives um, quite heavily. Uh, and I trained up t t teams at that time. I mean, we trained up a team for the... We went to the Philippines in 87. My hips were just starting to fall apart then. And then team in 89, which I forked in. So I was still mobile at, you know, in 89. And then 90, I was, I was out, you know. Um, and, uh, and then went back in 92 as the, the coach. Uh, but I trained all those people, you know, all the Lee Banders, the Krishna Gadanias, the Pat O'Malley's and, and all that, you know. John Harvey's, um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was interesting. But I, I, I got really, really stoical. So I do things in, in, in say, in, in France, particularly going to Nantes, and I could come back and have a big bag. God knows why I had a big bag. Why did I carry that big bag? A huge bag with like pads and gloves and sticks and everything in it. Um, and then I get to the airport and I have to get the tube into town and I get to the tube in town there wasn't anyone to meet me and I had to walk home yeah, yeah. and after like two long days so that was really hard but then after that everything is easy. everything's easy isn't it everything's yeah. you know and we used to do mad things like that. I'd put my feet in a a, a laundry basket that we had like a plastic yeah. laundry basket about waist high and then get people to s s get people to stab me yeah uh and we do all the nice stuff because there's so much space yeah. within the space you have you know yeah. and everyone thinks you've got a step and i did a thing today with james who's my like, training training partner I go no you stepped you stepped and i've hit you because You've not taken your body out of the way. You've taken your leg in preparation of taking the body, you know? So he's gone like, step, but he's still there. So therefore, I've hit him, you know? Instead of moving and then the step coming after that, you know? So all that stuff that you can only learn when you can't do otherwise, you know? Yeah. And, and if you try to say to people, you need to learn this, they want to default to what's easy. Yeah. Or they don't want to learn it. They, they want to learn it, and then they want to say, "I know that now. Teach me something else." Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, and it's not really better. I, I mean, the thing we've done with the four D thing, because like four D is really just uh, came to me. I thought, well, what can I teach? At that time, I was doing from about ninety six. I was doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, maybe ninety five, ninety six. Uh, I was doing Brazilian. Jiu-Jitsu under the, under the Machados. Um, but the trouble is with BJJ, if you haven't got any hips, you're a bugger, you know? So I, for about 10 years, oh no, it wasn't 10 years, about six or seven years, I laid on the floor and people jumped on me, basically, you know? Uh, sometimes I was on top, but most of the time I was underneath. So after a, a while we think, well, I haven't got anything to bring to the game here so when I developed 4D I said well what do I do this that I'm great at yeah and I thought uh, striking clinching weapons and group attacks so I've experienced all of those so I thought well that's the four dimensions of stand up isn't it yes and then what, what I said well how do you because that's still a huge um, a huge amount of stuff isn't it to get good at any of that is huge. So I thought, well, you can't learn it all. You've got to prioritise that list, yeah. you know, and make it simpler, so that you go, oh, here I am again. Oh, 
here I am again. So that was the 4D thing was to make it not four dimensions that are different, but four dimensions that are almost the same, the templates almost the same. So you see the same shape might be exhibited differently, but the shape, you can see it. Oh, that's a box. That's a box. You know, I might have my hands differently or I might grab you, grab your waist or grab your head or grab your hands, but I'm still, you know, it's a box, you know, and, uh, and that really, really helped. And then I started, doing very well against you know people really well you know just going and I'd have time and I'd almost like you know order order pizza if I ate one yeah um, and and I realised the knife the knife and the stick are great because they teach you about speed and and uh, preciseness because with the stick, it's just incredibly quick. And then with the knife, it's that thick. It's not that thick or, or this thick. It's that. It's, it's, it's tiny. So, therefore, your, your accuracy, your pickups, everything just gets better, yeah? yeah. Uh, and you become more assured. And then also ways to look at how do I make time stop or s slow down? So, I'm an old guy with some uh, ha handicaps. So how do I make you equal to, to me? Yeah. And in Filipino martial arts, they often talk about manipulation. Yet yeah. most people pay like, sort of a lip service to that. They don't really do it. You know, they go, oh, you can come here, you can go there. But they're not challenging it. It's not like, what's great about BJJ is that you you do a drill and then you try to apply that drill against a person who's not going to let you apply that drill. And I think like most stand-up stuff is I'm going to do this and you're going to be challenged, which is, is there, there's not many more challenges in martial arts than needing two hips replaced. No, no. It, it, it's not pleasant. A, if you have a physical challenge, it doesn't mean to say you just, you bow down under it. You, but, you work around it and that's a, that's a good analogy for life look what happens then is if is if you buckle under then you are buckle under to the next challenge you, yeah. you, you, you become a patient yeah and I was never patient you know I'm impatiently uh, and and I'm like I'm a bit like Tigger I'm not having a great day to day I'm a bit flat today but normally people will tell you I'm like Tigger I'm bouncy yep. I'm like yep. optimistic let's go um, in fact I'm often saying let's go and yep. again where I don't know but somewhere you know, let's go is the thing um, and uh, I think the challenge is the thing that defines you because then you go um, is it going to define me or am I going to use this as a tool you know and uh, I, I was very very fortunate. I think throughout my whole life, I've just been lucky. But then, luck's between here, isn't it? Yeah. 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 My, yeah my, my wife, uh, when she first met me, uh, I needed a double hip replacement. I had a stammer, and she thought I was poor. And I said to her, I'm so lucky. I'm one of the luckiest people alive. And she looked at me and went, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is luck. You know, you're doing like... Yeah. Uh, but I am. I'm really lucky. I'm very fortunate. So when I was about 15, my my dad was in the hotel business and we used to host these uh, conferences for Combined Insurance of America. And that was led by a guy called Clement Stone. And Clement Stone did a book with Napoleon Hill, who yeah. those of people who know Napoleon Hill, uh, called Success of a Positive Mental Attitude. So Clement Stone gave me his book, his personal hardcover book, with all these annotations in. I've, I've got it somewhere up here on, on the book. Am I right in thinking that, was he, was he a minister? Was he a minister? He may have been, yeah. He I, th I think been. that, I think, this is, this is a random one, but I think he was um, Donald Trump's minister. And, oh, really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Back, back in the day. Look, look, back I've, in the day. I've got the same hair as Donald Trump. Yeah. yeah. 
and the tan. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he was, he was probably very old by that time because, um, you know, he was creeping on a bit. But anyway, he gave me his book. Yeah. And the book was for a 15 year old, yeah. was great. He said, um, they had things like uh, a, a priest gives his, uh, his child a picture. You know, if she's interrupted, here's a picture of the world. Go and uh, tear it up. Go and place it back together again. So they come back 10 minutes later and they say, oh, on the other side was a picture of a man. So I put the man together and I knew when I turned it over the world, right, oh, it's a, it's a hokey story. Yeah. But but the principle really hit me as a 15 year old. I went, yeah, you've got to sort out the you, yeah. haven't you? You know, you've got to sort out you. And then it, there was a thing where they said, there's always a cure. You just have to go and find it. Yeah? yeah. And I still feel that nowadays. I'm still searching for the cure to my ills and, uh, and, and I'm always testing things, to see people. I'm very optimistic about yeah. what, what's achievable. Yeah. Um, and so it's a great book, you know, what the mind can conceive and believe can be achieved. That's a bit of a, a long yeah. mouthful, but basically let's go, isn't it? You know, don't be, don't be passive. So the thing we talk about in 4D all the time is I'm active. I'm never passive. Like yeah. today we did a disarm thing where James disarms me and hits me back. Yeah. Um, and we were working on the disarm. I said, but what do you think I'm doing whilst you're disarming me? I'm hitting you. Yeah. So, so you need to factor that in straight away. And even then I've got, and then, then I'm factoring in that, you yeah? know, I'm factoring that you're hitting me back. So I'm going to slip that. And then you're factoring in, I'm going to slip. So you're dropping your elbow and I'm going to pick your elbow up and use it. And so we're, we're doing this on a really basic technique, but we started with the basic. Then we went one, I'm hitting you because you're, you're in the wrong place. Now I'm not hitting you because you're too far. So now I, I, I use the box on you because then you, what he did when he disarmed, instead of disarming um, directly at me, he disarmed here. So there's a gap here. I can, I can put my hand in. Yeah. So I just enter. Yeah. I'm always coming. Yeah. yeah? Uh, you know, I'm going to pick up because this is this group. There's, there's a lot of martial artists in this group, but there's also a lot of just people who know nothing about martial arts. Yeah, which yeah. You know, everything which ties in. No, I, I think perfect. everything yeah. ties in. So there's a couple of things you said. You're never passive. No, you're never. Always active, and I think that that's that's true of life. If, if we lie down under it, you know, it would have been the easiest thing in the world at 36 when somebody says, "I'm ordering you uh, a wheelchair." For to go, oh shit! I'm going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah, you, said, yeah. you said no. I'm going to be active. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to. Uh, so you, and you said about you're a very lucky person, and yeah. I don't know who the golfer is, but I heard a story about this golfer, and um, he was out practicing on a green, practicing, practicing, practicing. Six o'clock in the morning, somebody came back. Sort of twelve o'clock in the afternoon, he's still practicing. He came back at six o'clock that night, and he's still practicing. And I went over to him and I said to him, "You know, you're a really lucky uh, player. You get all the jam, you get all the, sh the jammy shots. You just seem to get them." And the guy who's practicing away says, "The more I practice, the luckier I get." Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's sort of true. Of you just don't give up. That's why you're lucky. <laughs> you don't give up. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna tell them about a story about you a couple of weeks ago, which which leads me on to your gut health. Um, uh, it's probably more. It's probably about a month ago. I went on on Facebook and I was a picture of you, and your face was cut to pieces. Uh, so, like, like I mean, it looked like you had taken a chunk out of your chin. I had, yeah. It's, it's, it's not really healed yet. It's still a bit sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> but, like there was, there was a chunk out of your chin. And there's this, and like, if people want to go back on on Bob's Facebook to see it, and it looked horrendous. It looked like fucking somebody took a knife and just yeah. taking a bleach chin and chopped it off. And there's you smiling at the camera going, oh, I fell off my bike. And you go, you just, there's more to it than just falling off. You just don't fall off your bike. And then you went into the story of that somebody had cut across you and you came off your bike. But I've seen a photograph of you like seven days later and the, the scar tissue and 
you look, you'd heal so quickly. Yeah. And some, yeah. some people can have a bruise on their arm and four weeks later, the, the, the bruise is still there. But you well, seem to heal very quickly. I um, heal very quickly because I have a really individual t- 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 diet, you know, which is high in protein yeah. and, and fish and, and salad, basically. And, and um, that brings me on to diet because everybody goes... You know, when you when you're talking to people, to say, "What's the ultimate diet? What's the diet that's, that's the best?" You know, is it this diet or that diet? I know a guy. There's a guy that, that, that sort of I know goes to the dojo, goes to the gym, and he cannot process protein at all. Wow. He he can only process carbohydrates, wow. so that he can take no protein whatsoever. But yet he's in the gym and he's building muscle. And, right. And the point would be is that if you speak to any anybody who who is a nutritionist to say you need protein to build muscle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But he, he can't process protein, so he works through only carbs. You on the other side, or the other side of scale, you can only I should, I, I, I should have a, a partnership with him. I should get one of those civil partnerships yeah. where we where we live together and <laughs> Jack Spratt would eat no yeah. fat, his wife yeah. would eat no thin, yeah? <laughs> I'm not sure who's going to be Jack Spratt, but... Um, yeah, you can't eat, I, I, you can't I can't eat carbs at all. At all? No, if I eat carbs, I, I just get ill. Yeah, which, you know, uh, was that always the case, even as a child, or did that come on to Probably. you? Probably, probably it was like that as a child, because I was always ill as a child. I was at boils, mastoid, polypus, those are gross in my ear, and basically it was on this channel here, and went down like that so I'd have boils everywhere you know it was always boils they was putting cowling pult- poultices on yeah back in the days where it was just back like hot melting molten larvae you put it on your boil and, and you know yes. and they said I had to draw the badness out of you and I'm going really it, 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 it was mad yeah? yeah um and and then as a kid I was always in the hospital so I was always I was either bouncy running everywhere or I was ill, you know, it was like that. And and looking back now, I realised we've got familial thing, that the whole of my family has this to a certain extent, because uh, my s- s- sister has it, her children have it on a, a minor level, you know, but because obviously it's, as it's got diffused out, it's, yeah. it's bad, but it's something that myself and, and my two s- sisters have quite badly. Yeah. My younger sister, not as bad. Uh, so it's a genetic or a f- a familial. Does, uh, your son have it? Does your son have it? No, no. My no. son is is uh, my 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 ex. His his mum is Chinese Italian. Okay. And he seems to have in in uh, inherited all of her her genes. Yeah. Uh, so he likes garlic, onions, anchovies. Uh, Kimchi, Marmite—the the maddest tastes, you know—and uh, it's great. It's lovely. He, he enjoys everything, you know. You know, but I'm like a really s- s- sensitive flower, you know. So I'm going out this evening with uh, Terry Barnett, who's a full instructor in uh, Jeet Kune Do, and we've been friends for forty nine years, you know, and. Um, and all I'll have is a, just a piece of meat or a piece of chicken or a piece of fish and some leaves. That's it. Yeah. Bit of onion. You know, yeah. that's it. And it's weird, isn't it? People go, oh, I couldn't live like that. And you go, yeah, you could. Once your stomach's full, you're fine. You know, yeah. it's just like we we build this thing up in our head. I've got to have green cakes. You know, and you go, no, you don't have to have cream cakes. You, you're perfectly capable of living on, you know, you know, your pistachios yeah. and, and, and 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 other things. You know, you're just, um, and so that's what it really taught me. It taught me, but no, no, okay. As long as I've got something I can eat. I did have a one time when I got very allergic, where there was about five proteins I could eat in the world, and that was quite scary. I have to admit, I was very scared. So I went to the butcher because I became like intolerant to chicken because I was eating lots of chicken. 
And every time I ate it, I, I, I didn't feel good, yeah? Uh, and, um, and I went to the butcher. I said, look, can't eat that. That placed me up. Can't eat that. That placed me up. He said, okay, we've got alligator, ostrich, buffalo. Uh, and I thought, okay, so that's three. And then I've got lamb I could eat and fish I could eat. And I went, okay, I've got five. I've got five proteins I can eat in the world, yeah? Unfortunately for me, I came back from that, yeah? Uh, and improved and and I can eat quite widely. Now, you yeah? wonder, was, it, was it because the chicken and the beef had some sort of processing in it or, or been... No, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I, I think my gut flora is just totally quite toxic and if I eat too much of anything, it gets reactive to it, you know? It's a whole, whole like inflammatory thing. I'm, 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 I went to a, a clinic last year now, and uh, they looked at me and they said, "Well, you're just a war. Your your gut is just a war. So we need to calm it down. So antihistamines, uh, less food, n n no food that you you can't eat, and those things like uh, the the." Nightshade family, you know, tomatoes, aubergines, potatoes, they're all quite inflammatory yeah. foods, which people don't realise. Yeah. People don't realise that, say, um, herrings and mackerel and smoked fish or s smoked stuff in, in general is very high in histamine, yeah. you know? So it will make you more inflammatory. You know, and loads of, I was with my, my brother-in-law today and his hands are, are getting very tight and, and off, arthritic. And I said, well, look, I'm 70. My hands are perfect. I said, but I had that. I had that for about a year. I had psoriasis all up my leg and my hands were like this and all welted, you know. And I just went, no, no, I'm just ch 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 changing my diet. And I changed my diet and it, and it, and I don't have any now. Yeah, uh, but, that, that, that fascinates me. That oh yeah, but loads of people go, no, I've got arthritis, and they like it like it's like a badge of honour. And yeah. I go, yeah. yeah, don't be bloody stupid. Get get rid of it. It's not a badge that you you, you want to have. It's like saying I'm a member of the Nazi party, isn't it? You know? Yeah, yeah. I've got my badge from Adolf. You know, you're going no, yeah. get rid of it. You know? Yeah, uh, it, it's. Uh, I was talking to a guy who had gout. Yeah, and, uh, he was quite a young guy. He didn't you know? He wasn't old, but had gout. And I said, "Well, have you changed your diet?" And he says, "Well, no. What I'm doing is been taking apple cider vinegar." And you went, "Well, if you haven't changed your diet, the apple cider vinegar is not going to no. do the trick." No, and the apple cider vinegar is huge. It, it's, it's fantastic. It's it's it ameliorates it. It doesn't cure it. Where you got cure it is the root, which is take out the root. <laughs> Also, of those things. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to go back a step and go, no, diet's everything. Diet's... And also that thing about excess, isn't it? Yeah. It, people just eat, eat to excess. People say, say to me, aren't you hungry? I go, yeah, but I eat loads of fat. Yeah. Loads of fat. And people say, oh, you can't eat fat. That's bad for you. Yeah. Yeah. I have so much oil. <laughs> it's unbelievable, yeah? yeah. I have uh, grapeseed oil, olive oil, uh, linseed oil. So I have three different types of oil because they give you different... Uh, Omega three, six, and nine. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do that, and and generally I just you, you don't need that that much. As soon as your stomach's full, you drink plenty of water. You, you, you know you. But I've, I've been telling people for for years, you want to cut down on your c c carbohydrate because yeah. carbohydrate, if you're not using it to climb a mountain, it's just going to go here, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it, it doesn't. It, it, it wouldn't fill you the same way as, as protein. If you get yeah. protein, you feel full yeah. quicker. Whereas yeah. if you eat carbs, you could eat them all day, and they're still not going to. They're actually going to. Yeah, and and, and, and and also, if you're not using those carbs now, then they just get stored. Yeah. Uh, where because they're like they're they're insulated. They're great when you're out on yeah on the bike. I can remember being on the Londoners of Brighton. And I got to Ditchling Beacon, which is a big hill just before Brighton. 
and I'm just coming up to him, and, and a guy came up alongside me. He went, "You've bonked," and I went, "What's bonking?" I, I didn't know at the time. He said, "No, you bonk. Here's a Mars bar," and I went, "Okay," and he gave me a Mars bar. Boom! I was off again. Yeah, yeah. but I just needed energy. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, it's it's huge down there, isn't it? And all the things like gout, rheumatism, arthritis fibrocytis all those things that you know um, diet's the first place diet water breathing yeah you know and then and then thinking positive I think those are and having a purpose you know I think having a purpose is yeah is is important you know to do that you're not just working to watch the TV or working to that you're going I'm going to change change the world. You can't change the whole world, but you can change that little bit, can't you? Yes, your world. Your piece of the jigsaw, and everyone who in, interacts with you is up, you know. And that's that's my my aim, really. I think you know. So <laughs> the the thing is that if, if someone had bad hips, that that's terrible. You know. Yeah. If you need yeah, to, it's that's bad. If someone can only eat protein. And no carbs, that's also bad. But when you mix those two things together and your mentality is, I'm a lucky man. Yeah. That, that's massive to me. That, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That just, there's so many people in the world that that are are beaten down by problems that can be overcome. Yeah, the it was, you know, I, I, I get up in the morning. And obviously, you can't control everything, and, and it's just uncontrollable. So, and I don't do it every day. I'm not a, like a superhero. You know, uh, some days, like t- 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 today, I was going to get up and do my piano, but today I'm feeling very flat. And so, instead of starting at eight, I didn't start till nine. You know, uh, and I probably only did half an hour, uh, but I did a bit. I did a bit, and also. I try and have a routine that I do in the morning. So I'm just about to do a little ebook for people on rituals. So, and so I get up, I do my, like the Chinese say, you're as healthy as your gut, as strong as your back, as fit as your legs, you know? So I get up, I do my Udiana Banda, you know, like flicking your stomach in and out. So yep. that aids to digestion. And I give it a little tap, you know, and I do some side bends and twists. So I just get this, on the move, yeah. Then I'll do some hyper extensions and and core transverse abs bit. Then I do a mobility thing, which I did when I came over to you, that, that raising the arms and yeah. you know just opening opening your front. And then I normally, if I can, I finish that off with Surya Namaskar, the salute to the sun. Nothing big. I do like one side, the other side. That's it. You know, I don't do several reps at speed or anything. They're all nice and slow. And then if I've got time, I'll have a cold bath, you know, uh, and I'll drink some water. But then the day is mine then, isn't it? Yeah. It can go downhill from there, but I know I've picked it up. And loads of people go, I've got this. And they don't do anything about it. They go, I said, well, have you stretched? Have you, have you checked your diet? Have you tried not having wheat or dairy? And they go, I couldn't do that, mate. Yeah, yeah. I like pizza. And you go, yeah, but you're crippled. You know, yeah. it's a, I have conversations like this almost every day. Yeah. And, and people are trapped by themselves. They're not trapped by you yeah. or, or by circumstance. They're just trapped yeah. by them. You know? So they're not adaptable. And... <clears throat> and what the Dao Te Ching and Sun Tzu and all those guys say is you have to adapt, don't you? Yeah. I, I had a, a brother-in-law, and this is going back a while, but um, he had emphysema. So yeah. um, he was in a hospital and I was going to visit him. And it was it was mostly people with, with lung disorders. But outside on the fire escape, all the guys were having a smoke. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know. You think, if you have a lung disorder, what are you doing smoking? But absolutely. Uh, they were saying, you know, they actually, one of them actually said to me, it's the only pleasure I have in life. And you just think, 
what seriously and people will be the same with that with with eating a bit of cake or a bit of chocolate or something else it's the only pleasure i have because it can't get off of mrs c or whatever the case may be so it's it's hard to live a pure life yeah of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're humans aren't we 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 uh you know yeah. everywhere but it's harder to live in a wheelchair Oh, yes, yeah. It's harder not to be able to to move your wrist or your hands or yeah or those sort of things. So uh, I, I I choose my hard. Yeah. Do I want to 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 have to go for a run or do my mobility or do my breath work or do I want to be anxious or stressed or not be able to move as well as I can? Uh, and I'm like you. I I don't sort of do a massive amount. I would do everything. I do something in the morning just just to start my day. If my day yeah. starts well, everything's okay, the rest of yeah. that. Yeah, and if it all goes up, tits up after that, which it often does, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you go, that's oh, okay, because yeah. I've I'm, I'm done, done my bits, I've done my little bit yeah. in the morning. Obviously, there's some people who are really have a hard time, they don't have half an hour in the morning, yeah. but most people have got So you can make that ten minutes. Great, you can have a cold sh- shower. No, not not because it's the health benefits it, but what it does to you, isn't it? How it changes you. Absolutely. And all the people that I know have changed. have gone changed my life. Yeah. You know? And I think a lot of people sort of more stars term tap out in their on their life. They don't yes. listen to their body. So when you have. Um, uh, we went out, we were in Northern Ireland, you were down in Port Stewart, lovely part of town, we went for a meal, lovely. Lovely. and um, you went, went for a meal, and you didn't eat anything out of the ordinary, I think you maybe had a, a, a little bit of carbs or something, but it affected your gut, when we got yeah. back to the house, it affected your gut, and most people would say, ah, I've got a sore stomach, and you know, what can I do, but you had the process, you said, have you any cider vinegar, yes, have you any uh, what it, Epsom salts? Was it was another thing? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Yeah. And then you take that, and then you feel better. But most people don't actually make the effort to make themselves feel better. Most of them no. are almost they define themselves by their weaknesses instead of yeah. Yeah. themselves by the opportunity they have to fix those weaknesses. Well, and also you can help others think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 You've been there, so yeah. And, uh, Try this. Have you came across anybody else other than your family that has the same? Um... Not lots, but the, the the clinic I've been going to, which is a lot an Austrian clinic, the Meyer clinic, recently. I, I, I've been under those different people. Uh, I had one wonderful Indian doctor. She was fantastic. She saved my life really. She brought me back from the dead, and she used it every method: laser light, uh, bio resonance electromagnetic ozone therapy and you see like cancer patients going in and stumbling in and bouncing out like after a couple of weeks she was she was great but she's like sort of retired from it and is back in india i think um and um and 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 this other guy who helped a lot um I think there's loads of people out there because they say there's loads of people like this, you know, in that what's normally told to you, okay, you need, your plate should be the, a third, half of it should be carbohydrate, a third should be veg and a third should be protein, you know, and you go, well, who's that for? Well, that's, that's like saying we should all eat Kellogg's every day, you know, yeah. uh, it's propaganda, basically, it's, uh, it's one size fits all, and and that's so un, untrue in, in in every aspect of, yeah. of of your life. And I think what's great is if you take it for training, you know, there's guys who aren't ever gonna kick high, you know, because just how their hips are. Hips are. I've had guys like Rick Young walks in and just goes into splits, and he, it's, it's not a problem for Rick, you know, because um, the way his hips are constructed. And I know other guys who are never gonna get there, but I say, well. Don't do that. Do this thing. Make this your thing. Yeah, because yeah, you can't do that. So actually, that's simplified your list down, isn't it? Yeah. If someone says, oh, you can't draw, you know, well, you've got two options there. You know, then you either say, I'll show you, which is a great attitude to have, isn't it? You know, so you go home and practice for 15 hours a day. But 
the other thing is that yeah, I can't draw, but I can write really well. So that's going to be my strength, yeah. isn't it? So you make your strength into a massive strength, you know? Then you don't need that. Yeah. You don't need to draw because you can pay people to draw, yeah? yeah? So whichever way you want to approach that, and I'll probably do a bit of both, I'm thinking, okay, I got there. And when, when I didn't have my hips, it was almost like some, I was blessed. Because yeah. someone said, no, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. So you've got to find it here now. Yeah. And it's there in plain sight, but you have to find it. And, and that's true of absolutely everything. It's like you think, yeah, they, they, yeah we, we joke, we say, because uh, my sister's madly optimistic. She's worse than I am. You know, she'll say, oh, there's a tsunami. She'd go, excellent. Uh, get the surfboard out, you know. Or there's a hurricane, perfect triumph weather. She looks on the bright side of everything, you know. Um, totally mad um so i think i think you you, you got to define yourself by the challenge you know, like my mother-in-law has emphysema mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't too good but covid's been great for her weirdly because covid said we want to kill you and now she's doing breathing exercises her emphysema's improved because she's actively breathing which my, my brother-in-law gave some breathing exercise, which he's finally doing, because now it's the devil's here, here isn't it? You know? yeah, and now she's walking in the kitchen. Yeah, and now she's exercising in the kitchen because she can't go out. She's vulnerable. So she's doing 3,000 times up and up and down the kitchen every day, secretly, you know, not telling anyone. Um, so, like everything, isn't it? COVID's good and bad isn't it it's the best of the time yeah this big change is going to happen um and if bad things happen to you then how do i uh how do i how do i adapt yeah it's yeah. so adapt and change that's that's yeah. what we yeah. all have to do um it's funny about the dad i, I have a one of the coaches in the dojo uh he's his his father's native american and uh, this this coach a guy called Daniel Reed, he 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 became vegetarian, uh, but he had to go back to eating meat because because of his genetics, because of the Native Americans, which obviously yeah. they followed yeah. the buffalo round and, and they yeah. had a predominant diet of, of meat. It, his body wouldn't tolerate just just having uh, veg been a vegetarian. Yeah. So I think that um, as as life goes on i think what's going to happen is people are going to understand more that 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 is very specific to your genetics yeah totally we're, we're yeah. now now it's the big thing now to be a vegan now isn't it vegan yeah. this vegan that and vegan and that's great because it's better for the planet on the yeah. whole yeah. but if you don't come from say an asian background where you have a high vegetarian diet over generations yes. um it isn't for everyone, you know. Obviously, no. I'm, I, I try to reduce my meat consumption, and I try to eat less beef because beef is the most yeah. worst for agriculture. I eat pork and lamb and chicken and turkey and fish. I eat loads of fish, yeah. loads of fish. But even then, with the fish, I'm very aware that we're over harvesting the seas, so I try to eat sustainable fish, uh, like. Pollock, Gurnard, you know, flounder, if I can, things that are, are fairly sustainable. Because yeah. um, we're all on this planet and we all have to, to do our bit, don't we? But um, yeah, but you have to be alive to, to do your bit, don't you? So yeah. it's, <laughs> you, yeah. you've got to work it out somehow or other. Um, quick question. Uh, yeah. What? This is sort of, I heard this on another podcast and I thought it's, it's a good thing to ask. You know, <coughs> I love talking to people who have a bit of age. It, it sounds strange, but I'm not going to listen. I'm sorry if you're 20 or, or, or 30, but you haven't lived enough to have no. enough experience to tell me how to live my life. You although, just, although, if you're, if you're <coughs> Keely, Keely Jenner or, or whatever her name is, uh, you can still sell things for 20 billion, can't you? Oh, unbelievable. 
Yeah. Amazing. But, you know, I, I think that there's nothing, you know, if, 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 if somebody wanted to tell me uh, about diet or about strength or about mobility, I'll listen to somebody who's in their 60s or 70s who has strength and mobility and, and eats a good diet. But if somebody's just read it out of a book and are just regurgitating what yeah, they've heard yeah. in a book, I, I, just, I just don't want to listen to that. So, uh, as a, are you 16, you're 69 now? No, it's 71 in October. Ah, 71. Uh, so, October, I'm in October as well. What date? Yeah. What date is October? 30th. So I'm the 6th. I, I'm, I'm 57 on the 6th. But, you know, with the experience of your years, you know, somebody coming through, somebody in their, their, you know, there's a lot of young people that are that they, ha- they won't have a job in the next couple of months. You know, sort of for them, what advice would you give somebody who's young, just coming into the world, start, you know, leaving their parents' home and standing on their own two feet? What do you think are the qualities that they need? I think, I think, I think you really got to feed yourself positivity. You know, whether it's books, and some of these books are. are nonsensey books you know like the secret and things like that that good stuff will come to you just if you, if, you know if you think about it that, that doesn't work you need to work all the people I, I know who did really well they worked hard they were disciplined so I think a discipline but not not a mad discipline not 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 obsessive but just being dogged about things I think is is and turning up Turning up's a huge thing. Most people talk, don't talk, do. You know, uh, like today I was a bit flat. I t- t- turned up, you know, and I was the one pushing the pushing the pace. You know, uh, so wherever you are, you want to be the. I think Miles Davis says you don't want to be the best in any band you're in. Once you are, you need to leave. You know, so don't don't be complacent. Seek out great people because because greatness and success is is is, is catching yeah you know you hang around with great people you sort of get great i can remember um we went to a, a master's thing in uh, to teach 300 black belts in S- S- san diego and there was all these guys i really wanted to meet you know old old guys from martial arts and they were bellies on huge bellies and I couldn't give them any respect you know even though they were very good I thought Look, you just haven't taken care of yourself you've sat back on your laurels really yeah um I think discipline hanging out with with people that you think and be helpful you know because it's not about wanting it's about giving you know I think that's the big thing if you're a young kid coming up you can you can offer your energy to someone. Can I come and help with it for that? I'll run up and down for you. I'll bring the tea. I'll do that. And if you're just around, like people just go, oh, some people would take advantage of you, obviously. Yeah. You know, uh, but that's just learning, isn't it? Yeah. You go. No, I'm, I've been here for two months and they've not paid me, and then it's time to move. You know. And there's loads of that happening with in, internships. Uh, but I think why not? Why not be great? You know, why not be great? Most people would give up and, and settle for like working in in Tesco's or or Amazon or something like that because it pays the bills. And obviously, you do need to pay the bills. Right. But but you should have a dream as well and, and aspire towards that dream and be disciplined towards that dream. Because little change. I, I was going to say to my nephew is thirteen. I say it's compound interest, isn't it? Yeah. It's compound interest, but not for money, but for life. So you put in a bit of discipline here. You you, you do your scales on the guitar. That compounds you. Then you've got 10 tunes that you know. So when that someone comes along and goes, oh, we need someone who's got 10 tunes, you go, I'm here, isn't it? Yeah. Because you did that work earlier. So it's like compound interest. Pay in all the time. Yeah. Reinvest. Be disciplined, be helpful to, to, to other people. I, I try and be really helpful to other people, uh, and I try not to make waves. So, if a person complains, 
about something, which rarely happens. But with the online that I've got, I, every person who's a complaint, I say, what a great opportunity. I'm going to help them. Yeah. And I'll add to them. And if they've shown me, like the guy phoned up complaining the other day, uh, and I said, thank you for pointing that out because I didn't realise that I hadn't taken off something that yeah. was on there. I had a free offer that I hadn't taken off. You know? uh, and he said, I got charged. I said, well, there's all, all, all of your cash back. But thank you for pointing that out. Here's a free ebook, which yeah. which coming out next next week. This view is a present. Thank you very much. So now I've turned that guy yeah. from being uh, anti me to being like, wow, that's great. So you need to over deliver yeah. and also be cheerful. Life's lovely, isn't it? I mean, life's with all its vagaries is incredible. Yeah. Just look, clouds in the sky wind in the trees you know yeah. water hands how hands work just like when uh, yeah. bef when we were setting this thing up I I'd set up the zoom and I was on the zoom and uh, I w you you hadn't came on at that stage so I was just I was just working at the desk but I was singing and uh, I, I was working at the desk and I heard singing and, and you started singing as well when you came on you started singing and you know, I don't like paperwork. I don't like sort of my office work. No, no, I don't like it either. I, I try my best to be happy when I'm doing it because, yeah. you know, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you've got a, an opportunity to be happy. You've got an opportunity to be sort of depressed and, you know, try your best to make the decision to be happy. Yeah. And yeah. the more times you can force yourself to, to, to get past the depression, the, better, the easier it's going to be because it's a learnable skill. The big thing about paperwork was I always wanted to be more organised paperwork-wise, you know. And in a way, I'm, I'm not dyslexic at all because I, I write, as you've seen, I write quite good books. I get good reviews. But when it comes to taking something that's here and putting it on paper, it's like torture. It's like horrible. Yeah, if you get me to stand up and talk about it, yeah. I could say there's five ways to do it. You do it this, this, this. I just no. Yeah. In your head. So I realise now when I'm seventy, you shouldn't try to be. If that's not your bag, you shouldn't try to be that. Say no, I don't do that. I do this, and I work have a workaround. I get a tape recorder, and I get someone to transcribe it yeah. for me uh, because. I spent years trying to be like, well, I need to do my um, Gantt charts or my my you know, my uh, pie charts or, or whatever it was. You know all those things that you're, you're meant to do for being super efficient. Yeah. Didn't work. Yeah. And yet I go to I go to like dinner with people who are earning fortunes, fortunes, and they say to me back in the eighties, they say, why aren't you earning a hundred? Fifty thousand a year. I'm going. I don't know why I aren't earn hundred fifty. But I couldn't see what I was, and they could. Yeah. You know, because they. I was enamoured of their paperwork, their their ability to do like paperwork. Yeah, they could do paperwork, but they couldn't. They couldn't see things. Yeah. You know, they didn't have vision. Yeah. They were like drones in a way. You know, they're doing uh, and. So I think believe in, your, believe in yourself and if you've got people who don't believe in you, change them. You know, just get people around you pushing you and helping you up the hill. You know? And as a teacher, what I've always done, I think growing up as a kid, I was because I was Ill, Ill often, we used to play uh, rugby league and we had a, a teacher called Mr Fitz. Fitzwilliams or Fitzmorris. Uh, no, Fitz Simmons. Uh, Mr. Fitz Simmons was a, a St. Helens fan for St. Helens Rugby League, and he was always, always telling us about Tom Van Vollenhoven and people like that who are so fast that you couldn't touch them, yeah? Uh, and I was really inspired. So we were at primary school paying. 
rugby league in the south of England, which was the only private, uh, only school in the south of England playing league. Yeah, um, and often because I was ill, I couldn't play. And so then when I was good, I always wanted to bring people up. Yeah, because I wanted to help me, who was a bit decrepit because he was very kind to me let me back in the team and I, I eventually went on to captain my rugby team at school you know all the way through but without him helping me up I wouldn't know that so I, I try all the time if I'm teaching I'm looking for the weak person in a class the person who's a bit broken the person who's handicapped and you turn that handicap into a strength yeah yeah we've got a clip on one of our websites of Sean Veer, who's a, a a great guy, and he came in and he came in on crutches, and they said, "Well, my hips are gone." They told me I'm a cripple, and I said to him, "Well, tell him to f off," you know. I said, "Change your diet, get rid of the crutches, you know. Come training next week. We won't do anything that harms you. We do all the bits that you can do." Well, now he's one of my best black belts. Wow. Yeah, because and now he believes in himself because he knows he can overcome stuff. Yeah, and he knows he's got some gut problems and he knows he's got hip problems, but he he's transcended those and worked around. Yeah, and he's great. He, he's a wonderful guy. Yeah, but it's very easy to to believe that stuff, isn't it? When yeah. people say, "Oh, you're broken." You know, Mr. Tony, you'll amount to nothing. You need to go back to that butcher's shop in Inniskillin, yeah? yeah. Or, or wherever it yeah, was. was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah abs- absolutely. You know, just going back to that sort of that, that butcher shop. Uh, and the boss I had on that, he was, at the time I hated him, I thought he was just a, an arsehole. But he was one of the best teachers I had. Yeah. Because, you know, one of the things he, he, he used to say to me is, you know, I'm not being hard on you because I want to be hard on you. I'm being hard on you because I want you to be the best person you can be. Absolutely. And, you know, that's sometimes when people are a bit harsh, they're your best teachers. And yeah. The other thing that he said was that, you know, you're not, you're not working for me. You're working for yourself because every bit of yeah. skill that you develop, you will, you will walk out of this place tonight and that skill will leave th- this place with you. So if you're, if, if I'm teaching you how to bone out a, a, a sort of a, a hindquarter or if I'm teaching you how to talk to a client or to a customer, that skill will transfer. And I, I don't, I don't bone out beef anymore, but I certainly use the skills that I learned to talk to people because yeah. I was a very shy child. Um, if anybody talked to me, the head went down and the face got embarrassed, you know. Well, 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 actually, I, I was the same. I, I was, I was, I was a stammer. Yeah. which I've had since I was, I don't know, three or four or something like that. Um, uh, and I can do stuff to ameliorate it, you know, to, to, to make it not so uh, obvious. But I just think, I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to stand up. Yeah, let's go. Just, it's not going to, it's not going to stop me. Yeah. yeah um, it's and I think, um, I think sometimes hard, as long as it's done with love, you know, I think love is really so important in, you know, in the world. I think you can be really harsh. Like often if I was coaching like the British team, I walk in, I say to them, it's shit, you know, and, that, and they say, well, you really shouldn't say that now. You've got to like, encourage people. I went, no. I said, you think the level's here, but really the level's here. So let's go. This is the level. The level's here, you know, and, because they knew I wasn't doing it to put them down. Mm. They just raised the level. It's amazing, you know, because the level was in their head. Oh, we can't go on. And you go, shut up. The level's here. Come on, let's go. And they just go, okay. And they just go up to that level, yeah. So I think you want people who are tough on you, but not not going to destroy you. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you want people who love you, and sometimes they're going to give you a hug, and other times they're going to go, wait. Ten more minutes, and you're going. I can't go on. Yes, you can. Yeah, you know, and you need that mix of encouragement and toughness. Uh, and 
finding those people, if you can find those people in whichever field it is, those are the people to have, have around you who will teach you a skill, but they'll be straight on you, yeah? They'll be honest on you. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Life's a rich tapestry, isn't it? It is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, we're all here. The, the older you get, the, 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 the quicker the days go by. And you Absolutely. have to, you have to cherish it, everyone, and do your best. So don't waste them. Don't waste time falling out with people. Don't waste time getting annoyed with anybody. Uh, as long as I at the at the end of the day, I if I can hug my wife and my kids are all well, it's a good day. You know. So. Well, I'm very blessed. I've got a beautiful wife who's really lovely to live with. I've got a son who's as bright as a button and who's always happy. Yeah. You know? ridiculously he's always bubbly um and and i think wow that's just great you know uh yeah and health health is a bit of a variable faces up and down but in some ways it's having like having a samurai master yeah. who is going to come beat you at three in the morning yeah. to say you weren't paying attention you know yeah. uh, or or you've heard you know uh, like the other day, I heard I had some potatoes and some beans. We were on holiday for a c- c- couple of days, and I said, no potatoes, no mushrooms, because they're a fungal organis- organism, yeah? Uh, no beans. So it came up, beans and potatoes. And it's weird. When potatoes are on your plate, they're yours. Yeah. You know? You could say no to them when they're somebody else's, but once they're on your plate, they're yours. And I'll fight you to the death of them, yeah? yeah? So very bravely, I kicked them all off except for two little tiny ones, which I went, well, they won't make any difference. Oh, they made a huge difference. I was I was ill last night, yeah? Not not badly ill, but just like squirmy and couldn't sleep and, and stuff like that, yeah? So it's those things are great for you, aren't they? Because they go, no, no, but then people come up to me and go, how old are you? And I go, 71. And they go, what? And you move like that? And I go, yeah. And and you, and you look like that or whatever I look like. You know? um, and it's purely because I'm, I'm being strict, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got to finish off a wee bit, but I want, I'm sure there's some people who would love to know more about your your your... Um, your system, yeah. You do a lot of stuff online now. So what? How do how do they get in contact with you online? How do they see your stuff? If they if they go to, um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, there's Guru Bob Green group. There's um, there's 4D C- C- Combat, which is my page, yeah. which I, I publish videos and things on there. Um, although sometimes in, in, in the group as well. Um, and I've got a YouTube channel, Bob Green, Bob Green Academy. Uh-huh. Even though I no longer have an academy, I had an academy for 50 years. Um, but I don't have that now, uh, although I help, you know. Um, so YouTube, Facebook, and I'm on Instagram again as Guru Bob Green. And the Guru thing, I didn't choose that. Traditionally in the Philippines, uh, they call a teacher a guru or a guru, you know? Yeah. Um, and people just kept calling me. And I said, no, just call me Bob. Yeah. And then in the end, it just got got stupid, you know? I was the only one <laughs> calling me Bob, you know? Uh, yeah. So I just gave up and I prefer the guru to the guru you know uh because people don't often understand what and it just means a person who points towards the light that's yeah. all it's yeah. not doesn't mean you are the light yeah. just is the person saying i think it's over there you yeah know? and that it, that's as far as it goes there's no big thing yeah um so that's what i'm either on bobbreen.com you know which is my website i have an online uh a rolling online which you can join and I think that's got 110, 
20 episodes up on yeah. on there. So that's about three years' work there. Um, and you can go on, there's loads of there. There's loads of depth there. And we add into that every week, yeah? That's, that's not so, oh, I think that's it. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, yeah. bobbrain.com. And they all link anyway, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. Uh, we're, I'm gonna we're, we're gonna finish the live. If you want to stay on, we'll have a quick chat before before you have to go. Okay, right, folks. Uh, uh, no, uh, I have to go because we're going out to dinner with Terry Barnett. So, um, <laughs> love you, but if you record it all and all the bad, take out all the bad stuff. Uh, the there is no bad. So all folks, the people doing this and all of yeah. that, yeah. You know, take out all folks, of that. Yeah. Uh, I've just seen it on the Zoom. I haven't been on the, the Facebook thing, so if anybody's commented, I'll, I'll try and get back to you later. And uh, thank you oh, very and, much. And, uh -huh. and if I can help, if I can help anyone in any way with the gut stuff or or with the, the training stuff, I'm happy to help. Yeah, excellent. And uh, next time you're in Ireland, we'll go out for a nice meal. We'll go to the beach. We'll have a bar. lovely, lovely. Great next time in the sea. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Okay, see you soon, Bob. Yes, thank take you. care. Cheers. Lots of love. Bye-bye.